Hello everybody, hope you're having a great day. Well, we're out camping at Daisy State Park in Arkansas on Lake Greeson. It's a beautiful park and I wanted to show it to you. Well, the first thing you want to do, of course, is stop at the visitor center and check in. And get the little tag that goes on your campsite. So we'll grab that and then head to our camp. We're at Camp 82 in Area E. And it's an absolutely beautiful campsite. I'm just so impressed with it. It's so big and roomy and there's just such a beautiful view. And the camp pad is level. I didn't have to do anything but back in and hook up. And take a look at this. What a view. You have this large area up top and then you can go down and this is the tent pad, but we just used it as a patio to sit out here and enjoy our coffee and look at the lake. It's wonderful and roomy. Look at all of that. Now this time of year it's hot, but there's plenty of shade and as the shade moved around, we just moved around on those different areas, the tent pad or up to the upper uh, patio area take a look down at the lake and you can see it's pretty rugged that it's a pretty steep drop off but the lake is absolutely beautiful yes indeed and there's lots of boaters out uh, even though there's none in the shot right now but there's a lot of boaters and and uh, skiers the only downside to this is the steepness getting down to the lake it's very steep and if you're not sure-footed the chance of slipping is really great. So that would be the only, I guess the only thing that I didn't care for about this uh, camp. And I, we looked around at all the different ones uh, in the campground and almost all of them were like this. They're just uh, steep. But if that's not a problem for you, everything else is absolutely wonderful. Lots of shade, uh, lots of good views beautiful beautiful scenery uh, our campsite is nearest to the yurts and maybe they gave us a little extra room because of that I don't know but we had a great uh, campsite speaking of that in our little camper one of the things that we have to deal with is uh, stabilizing it and so I'm using this simple Valterra stabilizer it's very simple very basic but it does a good job of keeping us from bouncing around too much. So I just wanted to show it to you. It sets up really easy, not very expensive, less than $50. So we really like that. Now it's time to grab some food and get started cooking some hamburgers. Now we have this little 14 inch Weber Smokey Joe. We like to use it. It's so simple and easy to bring along. The only problem with it is it's so small you can't cook very much. But it's just the two of us, so that's plenty. We'll get these charcoals going nice and hot just right for hamburgers and I'll put the grill on and let it get nice and hot before I put the meat on all right it's good and hot now now I've got three hamburger patties that are just as large as I can get them to fit on this grill take a look that's about it three but they shrink down so small they almost don't seem like they're the same patties look how small they are now well, they're ready. All I have to do is put some cheese on and let that melt, and we're ready to eat. So pop that cheese on, cover it up, and give it about a minute, and the cheese will be melted. There we go, just right. Let's take them off the grill and get them inside and make hamburgers. Doesn't that look good? There you go. Make them the way you like them. Homemade tomato, a little bit of onion, and a little bit of pickles. Three slices of dill pickle, mustard, and top it off, and hamburger perfection. Well, good night. We'll see you in the morning. Hey, it's morning, and guess what? I really like that our camper has a place for the coffee pot. Not all campers do. Ours does. And here's the simple control station, all the little basic things you want to check your water level and your battery level it's just right here nice and convenient anyway let's take a look outside and see what it looks like this morning it's a beautiful day there's a little fog on the lake 
but it's just right. There's lots to do. There's a trail you can hike. It's only three quarters of a mile and it's very easy, but if you're more adventurous, there is a cycling trail and it is 31 miles and it's rated moderate to strenuous and you can really get a workout on this trail. And we're out riding our bicycles and I wanted to show you down in this area. Uh, this is where the boat ramp is and you can also rent kayaks. And it's pretty steep coming down here. It was really easy riding down but you really had to uh, put in the effort to ride your bicycle back up. But anyway, Look how beautiful it is, the boat ramp, and then there are some kayaks that can be rented. But we're not going to do that this trip. One of the things I wanted to try to do is see if I can get a fire started without using matches. And I don't want to use matches or a lighter or any kind of accelerants. So this is a piece of wood that the previous campers left in the fire pit. And I'm going to try and make some wood shavings that are thin enough that they will catch a spark from a ferro rod. So I'm going to try to get a fire started with a spark from a ferro rod. Some call it a fire steel. And the way you want to do that is get some wood shavings. Now, if you leave the shavings attached to the wood, it's called a feather stick. But if you go ahead and shave them off completely like this, then it's just wood shavings. And you want a good knife, good sharp knife, and of course this is not the easiest way to start a fire. Some people like to use a lighter or I've even seen people use a blowtorch to get a fire started. But this is an old bushcraft skill that I like to keep practicing and so I know I can do it and it's a lot of fun, at least I enjoy it, uh, to have this skill. Uh, the main trick is to be able to make these shavings thin enough so that a simple spark is all you need to actually get a flame and in order to do that you have to go really slow and get them as thin as possible take a look very gently and slowly those little curls and so we've got a plate full and now it's time to open up some of this wood that I purchased at the visitor center and it's a little green uh, but it'll work it'll just burn slow and you can see the plate of shavings that I have there that paper plate and we'll set this up to get a fire going so we can, oh, I don't know what, maybe cook some hot dogs. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do, make some hot dogs. A couple of pieces at the bottom and then a couple going the opposite way. Now, what I'm going to do is what's considered an upside down fire. And you can't just have those little wood curls and then big pieces of wood. And so I'm going to go ahead and make some even... Uh, smaller pieces of kindling and use my knife and this is called batoning and it's another bushcraft skill and from a larger piece of wood you can make smaller thinner pieces and you can also just pick up what's available around the camp area there's always little twigs and fallen dead branches and I'm even going to pull out the saw and cut this into a couple of smaller chunks. I don't really care for a huge fire and certainly not on a hot day like this so a relatively small fire just large enough to enjoy and to cook on and this little silky saw will get the job done. So we'll put a couple of chunks here in between these pieces that I've laid all right. I enjoy building a fire. You'd be surprised how many people really can't build a fire they don't know how. And on top of those larger pieces, we'll put that kindling that we split off. You have to start the smaller pieces, and then they, in turn, will start the logs. And we'll set those on just right. That'll work. And now it's time for the moment of truth. Can I use this ferro rod and using the back of the knife, not the blade side, the back, and you scrape it against that fire steel and it produces a spark. And we've got to get these together and hopefully that spark will start a flame.
there we go. It takes a little bit of, of work, but you can do it. And so without using a lighter or any kind of lighter fluid, we put those small twigs that I picked up from the camp area right on top of those wood shavings. And we'll just set the entire paper plate right on top of the wood pile. And that's how you start a fire without using matches or lighter, but just a ferro rod, ferrocium rod. There's something wonderful about a fire, a building one and watching it and keeping it going. I don't know what it is, but most people really enjoy it. I certainly do. And I want to encourage you to give it a try. Give this method a try. Well, now that we've got the fire started, uh, we'll just have to let it get going and once it gets nice and hot it's, it'll be time to uh, do some cooking adding a few more of the twigs and sticks that we picked up and it's from the camp area oh yeah this is going to be a nice fire it'll, it'll last for hours so let's go ahead now and cook some hot dogs four will be plenty just for my wife and i i'll have probably three and she'll have one and they're ready. How do you like your hot dogs? I like mine pretty simple. A little ketchup, a little mustard, maybe some relish, and a little bit of cheese, and then I'm happy. I guess that makes me a happy camper. And there they are. Beautiful. And the fire burned for a couple of hours. Anyway, what's camping without a fire? It's great. Well, we truly enjoyed our stay here at Daisy State Park. And uh, if you're looking for a place to visit, a nice park, I want to uh, recommend this one to you. It's at 103 East Park in Kirby, Arkansas. And there's the phone number. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye now.